Yo! So, today we're going to be uh, talking about how we're going to build the window frames. Uh, but before we can get started on that, we got to go run, pick up some materials. Um, we're getting a lot of our stuff from the local Home Depot store. Uh, but a lot of this stuff you can find at pretty much any of your local building supplies. So, um, what we're going to cover later is going to be that cool window insulation process for the frames that we really haven't seen anybody do. So, it's going to simplify the build for you and uh, a pretty simple, simple process. So let's get going. Why do we have 30 year mortgages? Whose idea was it that we have to live in our home for 30 years before we pay it off and we're debt free? You should be able to buy a home that you can pay off in five years. What, why can't we contain luxury? Why does luxury have to contain us? It's getting our steel. But these things come in 20 foot, so we're going to cut them down to 10 foot. But before you just cut your material in half, you want to make sure that you don't have a ton of scrap when you're done. So every piece is calculated out so that we're going to have at least amount of scrap possible. Because this stuff is charged by the pound, and steel is not cheap and not lightweight. So. Right, guys so throughout our build um, we're gonna be using impact windows and doors and the main thing that you're gonna realize besides the big increase in price for an impact rated window and door is that you're really not gonna find these anywhere that's not in a high wind velocity area so we're building this one down in South Florida um, I'm from Minnesota originally and we wouldn't be putting in impact rated windows however it wouldn't be a bad idea to install one of these it's not gonna hurt if you were building a container here and sending it up there. These have really good insulation. Um, you're you're going to feel that these are stay relatively cool in really direct sunlight, whereas a, a single pane window, you're not going to have that. The other thing about an impact rated window is as well, is it's the impact rating really means that you're going to be able to get a two by four launched at 188 miles an hour. And that's how they test these things. And it cannot penetrate through the glass. Um, I've heard that it's actually bulletproof for small arms fire. Uh, I do not recommend testing that, but it's kind of a cool fact. So what we're going to do is install these here and we'll show you exactly how to install an impact window. So it looks like I accidentally stole my girlfriend's gloves because I pulled out my work gloves and they say Rachel on them. So don't tell her if you rat me out, I will ban you from my channel. <laughs> So tomorrow morning we're actually going to get started uh, cutting our openings and prepping them and we'll go over layout all that stuff but we want to make sure that we don't begin a task like that unless we're 100 percent sure we can close it especially with you know south florida we have you know high winds high large amounts of rain we want to make sure that when we open this up it's not dumping rain inside here getting all of our materials soaking wet so it's going to be important to make sure you can start and finish tasks if you need to, to make sure that this thing stays, you know, clean and dry. So it's built to withstand the weather, but we want to make sure it stays clean, you know, and stays good. So we'll see you tomorrow. All right. Looks like we're finally ready for some, uh, some good weather and we can get started on our window installation. We're gonna show you today how to cut out the windows, how to, a new way to actually build the frames that we haven't seen anyone else do, which is really gonna simplify that process. You know, if you're not an expert welder, this is gonna simplify your life. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. <music> Alright, so we're laying out where the first bathroom window is going to go. And when you're doing this, you really want to be able to start with the smallest window possible. You really don't want to go on to your big slider or like a big window. Start with something small that you can kind of perfect your system 
and then move on to the next more complicated, you know, crucial windows that really need to be perfect. So one thing we came across right off the bat, I, I know I said earlier in the videos that it's really crucial to level this thing out. And uh, that really comes into play if you want to be using a level when laying out your windows. So in our case, we actually didn't follow our own instructions because we jacked up the front a little bit more because we wanted to be able to get underneath it with the intentions of going back later and jacking up the back and putting an, an additional block in there to give us a little bit more ground clearance to work underneath. Um, we haven't done that yet. So when I threw the level on the floor, we're you know, maybe a quarter inch out over four foot, um, which means you know, from the front of this trailer to the back, it's gonna be quite a bit off. So, which is a simple fix for us, but we're not gonna get into that. We wanna get into a window. So always take into consideration, you can't use a level if what you're working off of is not level. Because then when we level this, now the window's not. So that's a really crucial part of this. But we've got a little trick that we can show you. You know, if you wanna lay out your measurements on your floor, you found the center of your window. What we're now gonna do is just take our level and we're gonna bring it over to the wall. But now keep in mind, because I'm not working off of the level floor, my mark is probably a quarter inch out of you know, exactly where I want it. So I have to take that into consideration. But if, if you have a little bit of play left or right, and it's on a crucial you know, location for center, then we can go ahead and mark that on the wall. So now that we've got this mark, what we're gonna do is we know that's our center of our window. We're gonna pull a measurement off our floor to approximately where we want to put our window. And since this is going to be a bathroom, I'm not going to put it any lower than probably 48. Um, I'm actually going to go even higher. I'm going to go 52 to the bottom of my window. So now what I can do is I've actually got a stack of wood in the, in the way here. Of course, when I talked about, you know, putting your material where it's not going to be in the way. <laughs> so, but I'm not going to need to move that. So I'm just going to put it down a little over here. We'll put another mark at, what did I say? It was 52. So we got 52 again. So now I'm actually going to put this one more time. Because I put it on the inside here. I put this one on the outside. It's going to be easier for me if it's on the, on the outside. So that when I take my level, I'm now not using this level to level. I'm actually going off my measurements because I know the container's not level. So now I've just got it right on this mark, right on that mark, and I can draw a line just across these ridges. Now we have, actually my window's gonna be over here, so I'm gonna extend this out a little bit further. That's kind of why I was saying I didn't need to move that wood because I've got a long enough level. They make six foot levels, eight foot levels, uh, all this stuff you can pick up over at Home Depot, Harbor Freight. So now I know all the marks across, which are going to be level when we level this container because we went off the floor. So now what we can go ahead and do is I just cut a chunk of of cardboard. We're going to use this as our template to just get into these corrugated panels so that we can connect our dots. So pretty simple. Just use that to go across. There's no level or anything. I'm just using it to set it in there. Makes it really simple, but don't use a piece of cardboard that you cut this unless you use something super, super straight and it was perfect. So this is like the factory edge of the cardboard. And then I just literally just real quick cut it off. But I'm making sure I'm using this edge, which is real straight for, for making my, you know, connecting the dots. When putting in the window location, before you start doing any cuts, like our, our, where, we're, wow, where we want to put our first window is going to be in a location that we can kind of shift it a little bit to the left or the right. So when possible at all, try and land it in the exact same location on the corrugated panel as you can. And you can, with the system that we're going to teach you, you can cut it bigger. You just can't do it smaller. So find that center point, make it a little bit bigger, 
and then slide it to the left or the right to try and land. I'm halfway on the, the out portion here. I'm halfway on the out portion there. So when we get outside, it's gonna look nice and uniform. So without further delay, we promised we'd show you a new way to build these frames. And what we've done is just kind of laid everything out here. Here you can see how we're gonna build our window frame. It's doubled up two by four. Depending on the thickness of the insulation you're using, you might want to do doubled up two by six. But you'll understand what I'm talking about and how you'll figure that out in a second. So as you can see, we just kind of put this frame together. We staggered our joints and then we've cut this metal or sorry aluminum uh, molding that this is actually screen enclosure panels um, but we can kind of show you and we'll put a link of where you can get this kind of uh, aluminum so what we're doing is then applying glue on this putting some rubber sealant on the corners at the miter joints and sticking them in and what we're doing is i just took a miter saw that I had uh, and threw a 10 inch table saw cutoff wheel, metal cutoff wheel onto my miter saw. It worked out fine and it just kind of ground out the track a little bit on plastic, but it, it works great for this. And what I'm doing then is just taking my aluminum track, setting it on here, taking a square to do my, my 45 degree cuts, marking them out and just like you would a piece of trim, running it through, running the saw nice and slow through it. So once we move on, we've got our frame built. This window will eventually, with these plywood bucks, and the only reason I put these here is because of this fin on the window. If you wanted to, you technically could cut this fin off and not even need this. But it gives me one extra layer to play with into my dimensions, so I'm gonna keep it but this window then would slide inside that frame once you have everything built, but give yourself enough room that you have about an eighth inch all the way around it. So you can just jam some shims in there, level it out and get it good. So if we walk down over here, we can kind of see exactly what we're talking about. This is gonna be one of our finished products, not sealed in so that you could see the acceptable cuts. But this is what we were talking about when, if you're not an expert welder, if you cut this frame out and you've got, you know, an, anywhere between an eighth to a quarter inch gap, that's gonna be very difficult if this was a steel frame trying to weld these sections together while trying to make sure it's level because a lot of the YouTube videos don't show. When you cut these openings open, this wall fluctuates a lot. So we were actually able to use clamps, straighten it out, and get this window exactly with the same reveal everywhere. A nice thick frame. And then what we'll do is we'll take our spray foam gun and spray foam in here to seal all the way around this. And then we'll use a really heavy duty polyurethane sealant to do all of our miter joints around the whole perimeter of the window and around the whole perimeter of the window casing that we built. And what you can see here is an opening right before we install the frame. So what we want to do is put, put some of your insulation in prior so that you, you can figure out the thickness of the depth because these panels are in some areas touching the insulation, but when you've got an eight foot section running across the wall, there's sections where it's hanging an inch off the wall. So you can't just go off the, the measurement of you know, how far the metal is distanced. So if you go ahead and lay your insulation board in there or your framing, then in our case, we're gonna put our insulation, put our window frame in, and it's gonna sit perfectly flush with this so that when we frame our interior wall, it goes across the face of that framing and we can screw our new interior framing directly to our window frame. And that's what's gonna make that super solid, not be able to go anywhere, no welding, super quick build and all aluminum completely sealed in really watertight lifetime uh you know besides that polyurethane sealant that's probably a 20-year sealant anyway 
Um, I can't think of a better way to build these. So that was what we promised. We wanted to go ahead and show you and we'll check in later in another video and we'll show you all the finished products when we're done.